In this video, we'll talk about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a age-related neurodegenerative disease which affect the movements. This disease is not really new because it was earlier discovered by James Parkinson in 1817. He described this kind of situation as shaking palsy. When we look at the symptoms, it would be clear why it is known as shaking palsy. The major symptoms of Parkinson includes shuffling gait and uncoordinated movement. There is always tremor associated with this disease. The tremor is persistent and tremor in hands occur even at rest. And that is why probably he named, that, named this disease as shaking palsy. Other symptoms include stooping posture, masked face, reduced arm swing, flexed elbow and wrist, etc. Parkinson is pretty common these days among aging population. The optimal age where Parkinson develops is beyond 60 and it is more prevalent in males compared to the females. There are genetic factors and environmental factors associated with the disease progression. Genetic factors include mutation at least described in 20 different genes, which are associated with various cellular processes. Environmental risk factors include pesticides, heavy metal toxicity, etc. Let's talk about the hallmarks of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is characterized by Lewy body formation and the death of dopaminergic neuron in the substantia nigra. Let's talk about the pathology in a bit more details. There are characteristic neurons present, dopaminergic neurons present in our basal ganglia known as uh, uh, substantia nigra specific dopaminergic neurons. The substantia nigra region is actually present just below the subthalamic nucleus. Now, substantia nigra in Latin means black substances. That means these neurons are black in appearance. The reason why they are black is because they are dopaminergic and they produce neuromelanin. In Parkinson patient, one can see clear reduction in the number of these neurons and they probably die. So, one of the key aspects of Parkinson pathology is protein aggregation. And the protein aggregation of alpha synuclein is thought to be one important cause of Parkinson disease. Alpha synuclein uh, aggregations are actually forming Lewy body, which is one of the hallmark of Parkinson disease. Mutations in alpha synuclein gene has been, has been found to be associated with the Parkinson disease. Missense mutation in this gene can cause classic Parkinson-like phenotype. There are duplications and triplications in this gene which is also associated with Parkinson's disease progression. Now the normally this alpha synuclein protein is really important. Though the function is not fully understood, this particular protein is found in different cell types including neurons and neurons of all over the brain. So, this particular protein occurs in the cytosol, possibly also in mitochondria and nucleus. This, is, this protein is reported to be involved in synaptic vesicle dynamics, mitochondrial function, intracellular trafficking, and it might have a chaperone-like activity. Now, let's look at what happens during Lewy body formation. So, Lewy body formation initiates with unfolded or misfolded alpha synuclein protein. This alpha synuclein protein forms oligomers. These oligomers combine with each other to form fibrils and these fibrils associate with each other to form these Lewy body like formation. So the intracellular Lewy body is a characteristic feature of Parkinson disease and this can be visualized from the postmortem brains as well. Now Parkinson disease progression has different phases and these are known as BRAC stage 1 where you can see autonomic and olfactory disturbances but the Lewy body is not spreading the brain all over and Lewy body can be found in monoaminergic mono and cholinergic neurons of the brain stem at this stage. In stage 3 and 4 there is sleep and motor related disturbances and the alpha synuclein aggregates have spread in the basal part of the forebrain and also in the midbrain. In the advanced stage, that means stage 5 and 6, there is emotional and cognitive disturbances. And in this stage, we can see alpha synuclein to be present in the limbic system as well as in the cortex. Now, though we know few uh, aspects of Parkinson's disease pathology, there are many questions which are unanswered. 
One such question is why selectively the dopaminergic neuron die in Parkinson's disease? Why not a cholinergic neuron or glutamatergic neuron dies? Also, another question which hunts the scientist is why dopaminergic neurons are more susceptible to form Lewy body? What is the intrinsic factor that makes these neurons more vulnerable? One such answer could be a disbalance in proteostasis. Whenever there is misfolded proteins in the cell, there are autophagy mechanisms which try to clear up or recycle these senile proteins. But if there is an error in this autophagy system, there could be accumulation of these unfolded or misfolded proteins which might lead to the disease progression. Now recently, scientists found there is a gut-brain connection in Parkinson's disease. How is that? So first of all, it has been seen that in Parkinson patient, the gut microbiome is heavily altered compared to a healthy individual of same age. That means maybe it could be a cause of the disease or maybe a consequence. Anyway, scientists did a fascinating experiment where they took the gut microbiome or they isolated the gut microbiome from Parkinson patient and they put this gut microbiome into a mouse who doesn't have any gut microbiome. And after injecting this gut microbiome into the mouse intestine, this mouse shows characteristic defects like motor defects, inflammation, which are pretty much uh, pretty much uh, indicative of Parkinson's disease. That's pretty interesting. Recently, it has been shown that the initiation of Parkinson's disease could be starting in the gut because when they seeded a portion of uh, alpha synuclein aggregates in the intestine, they found that these alpha synuclein travels long way back to the brain with the help of the vagus nerve and then they spread all over the brain and this happens in an order of several years. So these findings really add up value to our understanding towards Parkinson's disease. Also there are other factors which are associated with Parkinson's disease could be also causal for the disease and one such factor is mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondrial dysfunction leads to many problems and there are several pesticides which contains rotenon and this rotenon is a complex one inhibitor and rotenon is known to cause Parkinson disease or it's a risk factor for the Parkinson disease development that brings out the mitochondrial connection with this disease development other than that there is increased ROS production in Parkinson brain so the neurons produce more ROS and the ROS scavenging system is probably uh, not working that well at this particular situation. So this ROS production and mitochondrial dysfunction together might lead to the disease pathology. Now let's talk about the microglial activation. Other than these symptoms, recently scientists think that microglia might come into the picture and they might be a reason by which the dopaminergic neuron died. They kind of destroy the neurons. Let's talk about the diagnosis option. So diagnosis of Parkinson disease is kind of, not, I mean, there is no absolute diagnosis test, but uh, with looking at the characteristic motor defects, a doctor can guess or kind of think of uh, this particular disease. So when the doctor suspects about Parkinson, they always uh, ask for MRI imaging. So the substantia nigra can be visible and the loss of neurons can be visible in MRI imaging or let's say in the PET scan. Let's talk about the treatment option. Again, there is no cure for Parkinson. Existing medication can help to improve the situation, but there is no absolute cure. It can increase the life expectancy, can improve the cognition, but it cannot cure the disease. These uh, medications involve substances like levodopa, which is, um, which is a particular uh, compound which can be utilized to generate dopamine. So in Parkinson's disease, there is a lack of dopamine in the synapses and that can be overcome by administration of levodopa. There is also dopamine receptor agonist because ultimately dopamine works by activating these dopamine receptors. So these dopamine receptor agonists work similar to our dopamine. Now there are other drugs or medications which prevents the dopamine degradation and thereby making dopamine persistent in the synaptic cleft. 
So all these medications are kind of useful for treat the symptoms of Parkinson. It can improve the cognitive output, but it cannot treat the disease. So just to summarize, treatment option includes medications like levodopa. It also includes mono, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, dopamine receptor agonists, and um, COMT inhibitors. Now there are some uh, advanced stage of disease progression where there is severe cognitive defects and there is problem with brain stimulation. So surgical implantations like deep brain stimulation might help in that advanced stage of disease progression. So I hope this video is useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. All the notes associated with this topic can be found in my Facebook page and the Facebook page link is provided in the description. There are a lot of dynamic notes, flashcards which would help your revision process. Do check it out. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let me know in the comment whether you enjoyed this detailed video. Support me on Patreon. If you are an Indian viewer, you can support me in uh, Beam UPI app. My courses are present in Unacademy. Using my code AP10, you can get a 10% discount. See you in next video.